Hey guys, thank you so much for showing interest in the Advanced Divergence training course. We're super excited to announce our brand new product, the ASFX Starter Pack. The Starter Pack includes the Advanced Divergence course that you're about to see a sneak peek of, and it includes the beginner course with our VIP chat for life. We've packaged everything together that a new trader would need to hit the ground running. So if you want more information on the Starter Pack, hit the link in the description down below. If you have any questions about the sneak peek here, if you want more clarification on the divergence that we're talking about, please drop a comment. I'm going to always get back to you guys and enjoy the sneak peek of the divergence course. So now that we've gone through all of these markups showing you how to draw divergence using reaction point one and reaction point two, you should understand what divergence is, where you should be looking for it, what's it telling us and how to draw it. So you're probably itching to figure out how do I turn this into an entry signal, Austin? I want the D1, I want the D2, right? Are you ready for this? So let's break it down a little bit more before we jump into chapter three. The differences again are in trend D1, counter trend D2. Write this down, screenshot this, you don't want to forget it. In trend is D1 entries, counter trend is D2. So what's the difference? The in trend trades are going to be off significant levels, whether it's 50 EMA, 200 EMA, yesterday's high, Asia high, something like that. It's going to be off a significant level and the higher time frames are going to agree with the direction. So you're going to have multiple reasons to take that trade. Now, this is going to be something where you use the L50 and the EMAs to help you dictate the direction of trend. So if you can find a perfect L50 in the buy zone with perfect EMAs that match it, telling you to go long, you're going to use all the significant levels that you know how, yesterday's high, yesterday's low, or you're going to use the 50 EMA or the 200 EMA, you're going to use those significant levels that I gave you in the earlier parts of this course to look for longs in direction of the overall trend off that significant level. And if you can have higher time frames agree with you, you're going to have a really solid D1 trade that possibly can run for multiple days. Flip this and look at the counter trend. This is going to present at the extremes, the overbought, the oversold, the maxed out ADR, yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and you're looking for it to go full reset, we call it, back to the 800 EMA. So you're trading back in the direction of the EMAs when you're talking about the D2 entry. These should also use the higher time frames to confirm or deny the direction you're trading for that reversal. So for example, if you're looking at a downtrend and you think it might be at a bottom because it's oversold, you would want to go to the higher time frames, the one hour, the four hour, the daily, and say, hey, are these long biased? Would it make sense for me to buy it off this support level? Because if so, then that D2 reversal idea could make sense because the higher time frames are always going to overpower it. But if they don't, you can then use the higher time frames to pull yourself back and say, I'm going to remember what Austin said, that D2 trades are tougher than D1 trades. They're less probable and I want to turn my focus somewhere else. So now you should understand very clearly the difference between the D1 and the D2. It's D1 in trend, D2 counter trend. If you have any questions about this chapter, about how to draw divergence, if you have any questions about what it's telling us, what it means, and where to look for it, please drop a comment below or reach out to me via email or Facebook or Telegram, whatever you can do to get a hold of me. I'm very happy to clear that up for you if you have any questions at all. Going forward, I'm not going to backtrack so much on all the basics we just covered, on drawing the divergence, reaction point one, reaction point two. I'm not going to touch on that. I'm going to go fast because we need to go through a lot of markups. We have 130 slides in the next chapter of the D1 system alone to go through. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into the D1.